In our last Project Street Sleeper video, we upgraded our undersized stock intercooler in favor of one that would be much better suited to our setup. The real work was hiding it all in the front end in order to keep up our sleeper status. With that job done, it's time to focus on the exhaust system. Let's get to work. We're starting with the stock exhaust system, except for this straight pipe, which was added by the previous owner years ago to replace a rattling catalytic converter. My goal with this project is to keep the visible section of the exhaust, the rear muffler and stock exhaust tips, in their original position, while offering more than enough exhaust flow to support our other modifications. So how do you do that? Well, let's start with the downpipe. I went with this one from Megan Racing that's made for a first generation DSM. It's made of stainless steel and is 3 inches throughout, except where it necks down to 2.5 inches to mate up to stock type O2 housings. It also has this threaded hanger in the correct location, so it bolts up and fits well. I ran one of these on my old Talon and it held up great for the 7 years that I had it. Here's a look at it next to the stock downpipe for comparison. Installing it is simple. After removing the stock downpipe, we bolt this one up. When building an exhaust, it's important to take your time, plan it out, and practice the old rule of measure twice and cut once. So with the downpipe bolted up, it's time to bust out the sawzall and remove the stock midpipe and resonator section that we'll be replacing. Here's a look at the off-road pipe that was on the car when I got it, and the stock mid-pipe. The piping is small and there are a few crimped bends, so we need to build a higher flowing piece here. After sketching up some ideas and arriving at a final design, I gathered up the parts that I'd need. A couple sections of straight 3-inch pipe, a couple mandrel bends, steel rods for hangers, a reducer to mate up to the stock rear muffler section, some flanges, and a high-flowing MagnaFlow resonator. Now it's time to mock up the placement based on our drawings. I'm starting with the resonator, since space is pretty tight under here. Fitting the resonator properly is critical for good ground clearance and to keep it from banging off parts of the undercarriage and driveline. This is much easier to do on a lift, but I've built plenty of exhausts using jack stands with great results too. With our resonator placement figured out, a simple measurement will tell us how much pipe we'll need to mate it to the downpipe flange. You know, I like building exhausts. It's kind of like solving a puzzle. It's what prompted me to buy my welder many years ago. It's been a great investment and has allowed me to take on all sorts of fun car projects and little home improvement tasks too. I highly recommend this Lincoln Electric Welder. It's affordable, easy to use, and has been extremely reliable. It's compact, plugs into a normal household outlet, and can tackle just about every job that a typical shade tree mechanic will ever throw at it. For those new to this sort of thing, this is a MIG welder, which stands for Metal Inert Gas. Pushing the trigger on this handle feeds out the welding wire electrode, creating an electric arc while also spraying out the shielding gas, which displaces contaminants in the air and maintains a good, clean, strong weld. Other tools needed are a chop saw with a fresh cutting wheel, a quality welding helmet, an angle grinder, some clamps and magnets for securing your work while you weld, and proper gloves and clothing as the sparks will be flying. My first step in linking the downpipe to the resonator was bolting my flange to the downpipe exit. Then I measured the amount of straight pipe needed and then made the proper cut with the chop saw. Chop saws are great at making quick, straight cuts, but they do leave some flash around the edges, so filing that stuff off is necessary after every cut. Now we can put that piece in, line everything up,
and then tack weld it together to hold it all in place. We'll finish welding it together on our fab table in a bit. With those parts tacked, it's time to make a strong hanger that will utilize the factory rubber hanger bushings. When fabricating something like this or brackets, a simple piece of clothes hanger wire makes for a fast and easy template maker. Use the wire to figure out your bends and length, then use it as a guide to trim and bend your steel stock. Once that is done, we can tack it into place too. Now we remove the section we just made and take it over to the table to weld it all up for good. Here's a look at our new mid-pipe. We're not quite done with it, so let's bolt it up to the car and continue working our way back. Now I'm making a short pipe that extends from the resonator outlet to a V-band connector. The V-band connector will allow me to easily switch axle back setups whenever I want. So I can run my stealthy setup using the stock muffler, or I can switch to a full 3 inch rear section and muffler for racing or that sort of thing. After welding it all together, I like to clean up my welds with a wire wheel before painting. And you know I'll be painting all this stuff black so it disappears from sight. Now we bolt up our finished mid-pipe so we can move on to the next step. I think you're going to like this part. So how do you use a stock muffler that was only designed for 200 horsepower on a setup that needs much more flow? Easy! You use a cutout that vents the exhaust before the restrictive stock muffler. Now I'm doing a bit of experimenting here. I chose this 60mm wastegate that I found on eBay. Instead of venting manifold exhaust gases to control turbo boost, this will be venting exhaust from the system to allow for more flow. I've been wanting to try this on a car for years, and this is the perfect project to do so. Here's a little test with some compressed air. I know what you're thinking, folks. I said eBay. Ah, eBay parts. The punchline of countless jokes and a veritable treasure trove of useless doodads, pointless bobbles, and hordes of goofball knockoff junk. There's some legit stuff on there, but you really gotta be careful. And now, I'd like to welcome you to Poetry Time with Irving J. Dingleheimer. This week's topic, eBay Motors. Take it away, Irving. Chips that add 100 horsepower. Tips that glow like a sunflower. Filters that cast a blue hue. Electric turbos that seem too good to be true. Ah, eBay, you're both friend and foe to car guys like me. Cheap parts and sketchy claims. The allure is strong, you see. 
so proceed with caution in this magical place, for saving a few bucks now may just cost you the rice. In the interest of time, I'm jumping ahead a bit here, but I started by fabbing up the section that mates the mid-pipe at the V-band connection, and next down to the stock muffler pipe. Now I can sort out my placement of the exhaust cutout. After lots of noodling, I made this angled junction pipe to mount up to the 3-inch exhaust just before the 45 degree bend. After a few test fits, revisions, and lots and lots of filing. I was finally ready to weld the V-band wastegate mounting flange to the junction pipe. Here's that piece finished and ready to mate up to the exhaust system. A final test fit and we can now cut into our exhaust so we can mount up our junction pipe. After welding all of that together, I cleaned up my welds a bit and laid on a nice, thick coat of my favorite spray paint, Duplicolor Low Gloss Black. So here's a look at the complete exhaust system, front to back, with the stock parts next to it for comparison. I know you. You like it a sneaky sneaky, don't you? Now comes the best part, bolting it all in for the final time. This required positioning the wastegate cutout for the final time as well. Here's the end result mounted up and ready to run. Our final task is to run a boost signal to the wastegate cutout. This signal in the springs inside the wastegate will determine what boost level that it opens and vents our exhaust. Now buying a length of vacuum line is fast and easy at the local parts store, but for the price of one 8-foot section, I was able to get a complete roll of high-quality name brand line shipped to my door. Running the line was easy, I just made sure that it was out of the way of any moving parts or heat sources. Man, I wish I could take this car for a test drive right now, but I'm afraid that I still have tons of work to do before this car is ready for the road. Thanks for watching. In our next episode, we'll make a host of supporting air and fuel upgrades to feed this sneaky beast. Until then, send me some pictures of what you're working on. It may take a little time for me to respond, but it always makes my day. So with that said, thanks again, folks. We'll see you next time. I also want to thank ECM Tuning, Detective Coding, and Forced Performance for supporting Tom's Turbo Garage. Please check them out as they not only do great work, they're great people too.